but I remember leaving Congo being homeless, coming to the UK to be homeless again. So it was about five hours every day. Just to train. Just to train. And I was thinking like, oh my God, I'm never gonna see my family again. There's no guarantee that we, we're gonna see the next hour. Welcome, Michael. Well, how are you, man? Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> I'm good, bro. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, man. I'm good. So you're like obviously a professional boxer. Yes. Um, I just I saw your uh, fight recently, man. So congratulations. Thank you, bro. Uh, your thank you. Fight. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Michael, um, you know what we do with a lot of our guests is we start at the beginning of like their journey and then talk about like their career and you know where they came from and then beginning middle and end essentially okay so so like um where, where were you like where were you born and raised um born and raised in the congo africa central africa okay i spent all my my life in there um i came in the uk when i was about 17 17 17 so never spoke english in my life before it's crazy it, man you, you, never spoke um, english oh wow what was it like um back at home it was hard it was hard i remember like as a young lad um i had to stay over there by myself because my family got a visa to come in the uk and i was the only one that they denied it visa really how come i have no idea bro oh really i, I feel like god didn't like me <laughs> at that time yeah, i was crying bro plus really? i was i had to be homeless at, at, the, at such a young age so i was sleeping outside i was hustling for food so see, life see. was very tough for me in the congo and, and you didn't have any other family over there i had family but far away from where i was living right so far away from what I was used to far away from my church so for me, I was thinking if I go to my family, I'm going to have to leave everything that I know here and start fresh there because I never left that area. Yeah, and you weren't prepared to do that. I was prepared to do that. So for me, I just had to be right. patient and just hope that I'll get a visa soon. Really? But it was tough growing up. So uh, mom and dad, they came over? Mom, dad, siblings. Wow. They all came over. There was living life. That's insane. And, it and, was crazy. And how old were you at the time? I was, I was maybe, I don't know, 14, 15, right. something like that. Yeah. Wow. And then you got the, and then you got the visa. I, eventually I got a visa. But before even I got the visa, you know, there's people like, people like to gossip and talk, uh, like in the neighborhood, they will come to be like, oh, I remember there was a guy, it was similar age as you, their family went to, to Europe. And we're supposed to follow them. And it's been, what, 15 years? He's still here. Mm. All this talk was playing in my head. Was it? And, and I was thinking like, oh my God, I'm never going to see my family again. Yeah. So. But did he did he, did he? he not leave because he just loved where he was? Or was it? No, because because he just getting the visa to come here when you're in Africa, is not an easy task. Right. Like if, you're, if, if they offer you a visa. It's a big. Bro, it's like you're going to heaven. That's mm. the way we see it. Yeah, it it's like you're, you're going to heaven like you're like oh you're, you're like excited yeah and being denied a visa when they give to your family it's just heartbreaking and I had to go through that as a youngster it was, yeah. it was terrible bro yeah I could imagine it's I, terrible I, well, to be honest I can't I can't even imagine it if I'm honest with you like what that was what that experience was terrible like. I remember we we went all as a family they call us they were like oh yeah the, um, uh, the embassy called us, oh, come and get the visa. Like, we were all excited. We're going to Europe, all of us as a family. And we go to the embassy. They gave my mom, like, the envelope. And he was giving everyone, yeah, that's yours, that's, your, that's yours. And on mine, there was nothing. Really? <laughs> I cried so bad, so hard. Oh, uh, what a question that's playing in my head is, how come, like, why did your parents actually go if they if they had to leave you? Better life, better life, better life. Like things was hard because in Africa is is those country where there is no a middle class. So it's either you have money, you can survive, or you don't have at all. Nothing. So there's no in between. So we were sort of there, there it's having nothing. It's like it's so it's like any chance that you get to leave that country, you taking it. Wow. Any chance you get to leave it, you take it. So it, it was like. It was just for them when they got the visa. I was like, you know what? 
because we i grew up in a spiritual family like oh god we give you a visa just be patient believe all of that but it was hard to go through that yeah that journey that journey was it was tough do you feel like you were not being taught a lesson but uh would you think there was a lesson to be learned in uh definitely i think so yeah i think yeah my whole life there's been lessons i had to go through a lot of trials and tests we all go through tests but i had to go through them such a young age yeah and it was tough physically mentally it's powerful man yeah it's it's powerful it's like it's traumatic it's like terrible at the time but if you actually can survive through that like it's, yeah. it's that saying what doesn't kill you makes, makes you stronger. stronger yeah i feel like that's when i look at myself like the way i am today and the way i i see things and the way i not react to things but sort of like judge things when they happen to me because of what i had to go through as a youngster like I, i'm not phased or moved easily by things yeah. even when they're happening to me i can sit back relax and watch it happen because i always think that okay maybe there's there's a reason why i'm going through this mm. maybe i need to be a bit stronger maybe i need to work on my patience maybe i need to work on my whatever is it that i'm going through i just take a leap of faith and just sit back and just let the situation come then i'll see what what i can do yeah yeah that's a, that's a wise way of looking at it because uh you know i think you know and, and even with me like even i'm I fall trap into that times where like when it gets hot in the oven and then you overreact or you yeah. might, you know, and I think it's important just to take a, a step back sometimes and it is, it look is, at man. the whole picture before you, yeah. you know, move forward. 100%. And the way I see it, it just, when you're cornered, like there's not much you can do. Like against you, there's the wall. The only way is forward. So yeah. when, when I, I get backed up, I don't really panic or of course i cry whenever i have to cry i cry because i'm a human i do that all the time like i cry every time but i don't act straight away on emotion I, yeah i take my time to go through whatever i go go through if i have to cry i do that if i have to complain i do that to myself i've got these rules that like whenever i'm upset or anything that's not going my way i take time to just talk to myself that's why a lot of people when they see me with this monkey yeah they don't get the idea behind it. It's what, like... Yeah, what is, it, what, is it, what is it? The idea behind it? Oh my God, it's crazy, man. It, it's... I think... Um, like emotionally, um, I go through a lot of like challenges. And for me, I had like this epiphany in 2020 when we had like a lockdown and something. Um, you know, we couldn't go see people, friends, family... Uh, some people lost their job. And for me, I think I had COVID so many times when COVID first hit. Do you? And I was isolated with my family. Like, we live in the same house, but we just couldn't see each other. So it was hard for me to just speak to people because I'm, I'm a person that like to talk. I like to talk to people. Like, sometimes I like to just bother my mom or my sister. I just get on and I like to yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't do that. And I really started to feel very down and one day i remember going to going to um t uh, what's the place again they even closing down um i forgot the name of the place but i, w I remember going to that store and i saw the monkey bro the eyes just caught my eyes i was like oh i need to take this monkey <laughs> monkey's got your back monkey uh, <laughs> like you know what from that day on every time i i got anything to explain to anyone or speak to somebody i just speak to monkey <laughs> Do you? and he's a good listener bro <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless monkey you. is a good listener you have no idea he just sit there he just stares at you you talk you talk you do whatever you gotta do and then you feel you feel better you because uh, you've been taking um taking him with you to like your uh, yo he goes everywhere with me bro boxing events as well he's you? like yeah <laughs> he goes with me everywhere man <laughs> Cause with me everywhere. So, so, um, so, 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 how did you come about getting your visa? Um, I think just, I don't know how it happened, but my dad just kept on persisting, oh, persisting, okay. persisting. He was still on it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, in the UK. Yeah, he still pushing. wanted me. Yeah, he still wanted me to come. So he kept on trying, 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 and eventually, 
I got a visa. But before that, I remember I spent like just overthinking, right, for my family. I remember, I don't even remember, but that's what they told me. I spent like a week, I was unconscious in the hospital. I was losing blood, losing water. I was just... Weren't eating. Weren't eating as well and all of that. It took a lot, it took a lot mentally, like in, in me, yeah. It took a lot, but I think I would, luckily I got, I got a visa to come in here. Yeah, that's an, that's an unbelievable situation to yeah. be in, to be honest with you. It's, it's like, we, you know, we take it all so much for granted over here. We don't realise how lucky we've got it. And like, when you say something like that, even I don't realise how lucky I've got it when, you know, you explain that situation. So I can't really quite put myself in that position. I can try and visualise it, but it must have been like, a, for, for you at that age, it must have been really tough to uh, to go through. But I do think there's a lot to be said about that, that these situations that, you know, we get an opportunity to kind of grow through these things and you know you're here today like so yeah you know and you're still going and you you got you know your life you generally give me the impression life is good and things are going well so when you've probably experienced that you know you 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 kind of really put things into perspective you do yeah i think looking back then you do you do put things into perspective and you have that sense of gratitude being like you know what i have come a long way you know although things that happened to me, I wasn't happy at the time when they were happening to me. But now looking back, I'm sort of glad they happened to me in a way. But when when you're going through that, it's terrible. You just don't want it. You're like, I want, I don't want this to happen to yeah. me. Yeah, you, you, you go into a bit of a dark place, I imagine, like mentally. Yeah, like, 100%. Like, yeah, you know, 100%. And, and, I, and like, I think, you know, you suffer, people around you can suffer. Um, but as you get older and wiser, you do sometimes look back and you think, you know what, had this not happened, then I, this wouldn't have happened. And that wouldn't have happened, you know? Like, yeah. Because it's almost like we 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 look back at certain situations thinking, oh, I can't believe, like, I wish that never happened to me. Mm. But it's almost like, would you trade off that over there for something over here? And that's yeah. sometimes what you got to ask yourself in life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of like things are all connected. Like situation that happens lead you to the reality that you're living in. So if that situation don't happen, maybe that could have altered the direction of whatever. I believe it. So it's, it's just about letting life be and you just be at that particular moment because that's all we have, mm. that moment. Mm. Like there's no guarantee that we, we're going to see the next hour. Although we, we hope for the next, to be alive in the next hour, yeah. but it's not guaranteed for that. Nothing's guaranteed, is it? That's the a... only thing that's guaranteed is this moment, me talking to you, mm -hmm. and I have to make sure I I live in this moment. Yeah. Because yeah, that's all we got, bro. I respect yeah. that, man. And like, so, so how old were you when you came over to the UK? I was nearly seven, oh uh, yeah, 17, 17, when I came into the UK, yeah. Were you still in a bit of a bad way, like, when you first came over? Which like men mean? Uh, mentally, me when I first came over, I was just happy to see my family. I bet, you, yeah, I, I bet you. But were. but you won't believe it. <laughs> so I came into the UK excited, thinking, "Oh, my life's gonna change." <laughs> All of that. Later, did I know my family? They used to, um, they was staying, they was living in Newcastle. Yeah. Okay. So, as I was coming to the UK, they decided to move to Nottingham. And they didn't have any any place in Nottingham, so they 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 stayed at a friend, like another Congolese person. Wow! Now the person had no idea that I was coming. So there was no space for you. So he had he had two bedroom oh. with two girls, and my dad, mom, sibling, they came to stay in there. And then late, and then all of a sudden, my dad is telling him, "Oh, I've got a son. He's coming." He's like, "What?" I wasn't aware of this. So imagine. I go in the UK on Saturday. Sunday it was all happy. They cooked me whatever I wanted to eat. Monday, he started telling my dad, "You guys need to leave." He told what the whole family. Yeah, you oh. guys need to leave because there's too many people in the house. I've got two kids and wife. There's only two bed, two bedroom. You guys have to leave. That was on Monday, and my dad started looking for a place. We knew he doesn't know what to do. By Friday, my dad didn't find any place. He's like, okay, I'm sorry. 
you guys have to live. So yeah, yeah. So he gave, he gave you a bit of time. A bit of time, but it was not enough. enough. It was not yeah, enough. Yeah. So we had to leave. And remember, I remember living Congo, being homeless, coming to the UK to be homeless again. Yeah. yeah and plus, it was in winter. Time. It was in winter. I've never experienced winter in my life. That was my first time experiencing winter, <laughs> and uh, and I have to stay outside. Oh my god! Plus, it was in. It's there's different kind of coldness when you're up north and here. It was in Nottingham, and I think uh, that year, 2014. I think it was it was uh, it snowed something. It was crazy, bro. Yeah, I was I like, bet oh, it was. I was like, what am I doing here? I want to go back to. Yeah. <laughs> It was but crazy, man. It sounds insane, isn't it? I'd rather yeah. be in a, a homeless. In like, Congo than in Congo. here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's crazy, man. It's crazy, was man. Every, was everyone homeless, essentially? Everybody. Were my they? dad. I remember I had like, oh, my youngest sibling, I think she was like maybe five or less than five, I don't know. Surely you're just not on the street, though, are you? We were on the street, bro. Really? Because we went to, um, I think they call it... Uh, House, housing Association, whatever they yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah, so we we, we went to see them. Definitely. They said, uh, okay, what Te temporary? Temporary, yeah. They say uh, we we can't really give you anything at the minute because you guys don't have any reference in this city. You're from Newcastle. Just go back to Newcastle because technically you're not homeless. Because my dad had a place. He had he had a, a place in Newcastle. Right, right. Or he just decided to move to um, Nottingham. They say technically you're not really homeless because you've got reference back then so in, they would give you a place they would, they, if you go to them they will give you a place right. but in here we can't give you in any place the only thing we can do for you if you have the money we can give the deposit we give you something mm -hmm. and then we see if we, we can help you to pay the rent but we we are not really homeless technically and yeah my dad didn't want to go back so we just had to stay outside why why didn't he um why didn't he like newcastle was it i don't know it's just Wanted to move, don't know. I guess yeah, just wanted to just move. Did, just wanted to move. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a, that's insane. And how how long did all um that last for? I think we stayed because it was it was a Friday, so we stayed outside that Friday. We actually slept just. You know, African parents they they sometimes they're crazy. They're mental, so they told us to leave. Yeah, but they was like, okay. We ain't leaving, so we went outside. Mm -hmm. they, this this is the door. We literally just sat there. <laughs> so we put all the blanket, all everything just there. We're just there. We're just there, chilling there. People were passing by. We're just there. That's, it was crazy, I, I, man. It was I, crazy. I can imagine it was. I it was crazy, bro. It but definitely crazy. like different. Uh, you know, I'm not being funny, but you was probably thinking like before where you had you you weren't even with your family now, yeah now me to be fair going through all of that i was just happy that i get to i look there i'll see my mom i look here i'll see my dad i'll see my sibling because i'm used to just being on the like bothering them like do a little thing with them I, i'm used to doing that so for me i was just happy to be with them but again it was winter bro i was i was shaking i'm like oh what's going on here let's go somewhere it's too cold yeah. in here yeah, no. so yeah so, so what happened after that for you? After that, luckily, what happened, you know, there's good people. Like, there's a guy that we don't even know, we never met. He saw us the next day. Um, it was like, what are you guys doing here? Family, with all the kids. Or oh, we was like, okay, we tried to ask for help with this housing thing. They said they can't help us because we need to go back to Newcastle. We're like, okay, it's Saturday. They don't work until Monday. So this guy that we never met in our life, Paid his own money out of his own money. Paid like a, I think it was he, I think it was um, like a travel like, lodge, or travel lodge or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, he paid yeah, for yeah. us for that Saturday, Sunday. So we stayed there. This guy was coming every day with McDonald's, just giving us food. We never met this guy, that, bro. It was crazy. This guy, I'll never forget him. Like we never met this guy. He saw us sitting there. He came, got us a, a place to stay, food. It was crazy, bro. Yeah, that is. It's crazy. Is. It's crazy. The fact that a total stranger that you've never met in your never whole met, life yeah, decided to do to do that for that us, deed for you, man. Yeah, it probably gave you faith in uh, humanity, innit? Hundred percent, bro. Hundred yeah. percent. We couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. And then this guy helped us when we came on Monday. I don't know what he did, but eventually, they sort of gave us like a temporary, temporary place to stay in nottingham in nottingham oh okay so you you uh, stood your ground you weren't going back. because of the guy 
Yeah. So because he knew, he knew, because he lived there all his life, he knew what to say, how, who to speak to, and then wow. plus the reference that he got us staying at that hotel for Saturday, Sunday, and then based on that, they gave us something because they knew that we wasn't lying. Yeah. So yeah. And you weren't going back to Newcastle. That was. For Wasn't sure. going back. My dad was not going back. My dad is so stubborn. He's <laughs> like, "There's no way we're going back to Newcastle." Yeah. So yeah. something must have. Yeah. You you know you don't know what could have happened over there, but there was obviously something that happened over there that, you know, he why, why he was being so stubborn about it. Too. Maybe I don't know because I've never been Newcastle in my life. I mean, I've been there now. I went had my fight there in Newcastle, but never really lived in Newcastle. Right. So. So 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 you've um so you you was actually from Nottingham then yeah um, I was there for like maybe a year or less than a year, and right. then we moved to London. Moved to London. Moved to London, yeah. And um, how old were you when you got into boxing? I was nearly twenty, bro. I was nearly 20. twenty. Nearly twenty. Yeah, um, so and what um inspired you to get into uh <laughs> money, bro? Money, money inspired was me. It's crazy. Um, I think it was when Conor McGregor fought against Floyd. That fight in 2017. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I grew up in church. As I said, like, I never really like to fight. Like, I like to talk. If anything, I would talk my way out of everything. <laughs> or if I can't talk my way, I'm just going to run. <laughs> but I saw the fight. I saw the build up. I saw the money they was going to make. And I said to myself, listen, if I can make even 1% of this, I know my life is set change change yeah. the direction of my family worth is change so i just made this decision at to become at a boxer yeah yeah and then um you just started tra training training like a lunatic man <laughs> i was training like my life depends on it <laughs> really i was terrible man i remember um, i remember going to this club for the first time in west london and I spoke to one of the coaches over there. I said, I, I want to be a professional boxer. So he said to me, have you boxed before? I'm like, no. Do you know how to fight? I'm like, no. He's like, how do you want to be a professional boxer? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, just make me one. <laughs> just make me one. So I started training. I started training. At first, I was terrible, bro. This guy was calling me names. I mean, for the, I first came to the training session, right? We done a session there. I mean, I was terrible. But... I didn't want, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't sure if I'm going to come back the next day, but one thing that made me come back the next day was this guy was calling me names for no reason. Like, it's my first time in the gym. He's calling me a murmured. He's like, look, look at your feet, man. You can't even dance. You're a young person. And the guy was fat and maybe in his 50s. But when he's moving, he's moving like a, like a middle way. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. He's like, look at me. I'm fat. I got a big belly and I'm moving. Look at you. You're a youngster. You can't even move. He's calling me, you're a turkey, you're a bomb. I'm like, yo. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way. I'm, I, I need, I need, That's I need to, I need to prove you wrong. I need to prove you wrong. Yeah. There's no way I'm gonna let you get away with this. And it's, it's, it is like they're testing you, isn't it? It's like it's either they're gonna find out if you're gonna push through it, yeah. or if you're gonna just break. But at first, I thought he didn't like me, but then later on, I found out that's just his personality. That's mm. the way it is. That's the way he teaches. Mm. Like he likes to play with like kids' mental. If you're weak. You're not gonna come, but if you know weak, when you come, it's gonna push you. Yeah, yeah. I to be honest, I had people like that in my life when I was a when I was an apprentice, like yeah. growing up and becoming a plumber. Some people I used to work with, they would be like, they'd be really quite hostile and angry. Uh, like it was that sort of environment, especially in the kind of building game. Yeah, and um and yeah, you'd think like, oh, why are they being like this and stuff like that. Crazy, but, bro. But this guy was just mental. He would he would slap you. He would be like, come here, come here. He'd be like, come here, come here, come here. What did I say to you? Double jab, triple jab. What have you done? Double jab. Why? What happened to the triple jab? Slap. <laughs> Just like that. Go back again. You spend three runs, nothing else. Double jab, triple jab. That's how we trained me. It's crazy. And you, and you kept coming back. Like you I kept, kept coming every day. You? Yeah, you never kept, re did you never react? No, never. You can't talk back to him. Like, just his voice. He makes you tremble. You can't talk back to him. <laughs> like he's got that authority when he talks to you. You just want to listen, mm. and he's a good person. And I feel like I owe him a lot. Like when I first started, like everyone in the gym, because of my character, because of the way I am as a person, I'm very gentle. I like to talk, like to laugh. 
they thought it was just a joke. And he's the only person because he saw that desire in me that no matter what he says to me, I was coming back. He saw that and he was willing to give me a chance. Like normally we were training Monday, Wednesday and Fridays, 5 p.m. But I spoke to him, I'm like, if I can come every day, anytime, I'm happy to do that. And he took his time out of his busy schedule to just spend time with me every day, bro. When I say every day, I mean every day, Monday to Sunday. Every yeah, day, I'll, I'll, I'll call him or text him and be like, oh, I need to come do a session. You'll come open the gym just for me really? to train just for me. He obviously, yeah, he saw, he saw. Um, yeah, he, saw, he just saw the desire. It's not like I was technically good, no. I was terrible. But you had I, heart. But I wanted to, I had the, I had the willingness to learn mm. and I was humble enough to not say anything back at him. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, do, do you know what? Like, I, I, I was like that when I was younger. I, I would never normally overreact if yeah. they said, said anything to me. And I couldn't quite see it at the time, but later on at life, I was like, these people were all teaching you something. They're just teachers, like, and I think sometimes there's, there's like, we want people to, like, be good teachers all the time, but there's different types of yeah, teachers. There out is, there. there is, man. There is, there is. So, so you you just got to training and like like nearly enough training every single day. Hundred percent. Because the way I saw it, like before even jumping into boxing, um, I've always wanted to you know help my family financially. So as a young star, the minute I was able to say hello, <laughs> I got myself a job. <laughs> I couldn't even speak, but I got myself a job. Literally, five months after getting into the UK, like when we got a place there, I started working straight away. I got a job at 17, I couldn't speak. I was helping out the entire family at such wow. a young age. I was working sometimes 60, 80, sometimes 100 hours a week. Were you? I was a crafter because I wanted to just help my family financially. And I had that work effort already. I said to myself, Listen, what are the chances of me spending 30 years working in a corporate ladder? I've got zero chance to make millions. Maybe if I, if I meet people that want to help me, the chances are very small, small, small to nothing. Mm -hmm. But in boxing, it's not guaranteed. But if I work hard and I give it 30 years, there's a chance, even if I don't make millions, there's a chance of me making good money to help out my family. So I decided to go with that. Well, and you're a bit of a, you know, a master of your own destiny because you've, if you work hard, then yeah. you you get the opportunity and you know it's kind of like as as long as you work hard towards it, then the results will kind will of come. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, the way I saw it, like even when I I start getting into boxing, looking at the tapes, like Floyd, it was one of my biggest inspiration. Uh, everything he did, he did, I'd I'd done it. Everything like it was crazy, like. For me, it was like a god. Like I would listen to him talk, 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 and say whatever he does to get ready for a fight. I would do it, would you? and I didn't even know how to fight. He would say, "Oh, sometime I wake up at five a.m. go for a run. I'll do that." He's like, "Sometime I wake up at two a.m. go for a run. I'll do that." <laughs> <laughs> I was doing everything that he says he does. I'll do it. I'm like, I wanna, I wanna be able to be better, and how can I be better? Listening to him, if he says, "Oh, I'll go run for twelve 12 uh, mile and then come back, hit the bag for four run. Oh, do that. Everything he says, I've done it. Somehow I feel like I got mentored by him indirectly. Yeah, yeah. But I would do everything that he said because I said to myself, like, the only way I can get something that this person has is if I'm doing what he's doing. It's not guaranteed, but my chances are a bit higher. Mm. I just listen to everything he says and that's what I've done. I think I think that's the, the the best way because my view is there's no point reinventing the wheel. No, like these people are tried and tested. They're yeah, like a blueprint, yeah. And they're leaving these little kind of breadcrumbs around. For, yeah. And, and anyone that's like a bit conscious about what's going on, they'll be like, that's "Yeah, a good idea. that's a good, good idea. Yeah, I'll try that. I'll try this." And you only try it anyway. It's not if like, you don't work, it don't work. It work, does it? Yeah. So what's the worst that can happen? One hundred percent. Try again. That's cool. That's a uh, yeah. That's, that's a quite a wise way to. Uh, like see it at a young a young age. How mm. did you um how did you learn English? Bro, for me again, because um I even never I never finished high school or you even didn't. I didn't finish anything. Even I started doing college but I couldn't. I just gave it up. It yeah. wasn't my thing. 
fair. For me, uh, it's more listening. I, I spend a lot of time um, just listening to like tips. I think there is this um, there's this website that I came across back in 2017. I think it's it's in BBC. It's uh, by by side something like that. I came across that website. So self talk. Self talk. Yeah. Self talk. So I will literally literally listen to people speaking. And then I'll pause, repeat whatever they say, without even knowing what they're saying. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> just, what, what, yeah, just whatever they're saying, just gonna repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And that's how I sort of like memorize a few words. And the more I spoke to people, the more I added a few words into my vocabulary. And yeah, man, that's yeah, incredible. Man, just like that. Yeah, that's 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 pretty. So you so you would like training. Um, so you've been training, you were working. Um, did, did, did you have to become an amateur before you became a Yeah, pro? I had to become an amateur. I spent one season, I had 14 fights in Four. one season. I, just, I was just, I was, I was, season. I was constantly on the matchmaker of my club. I was like every day calling him, yo, I need a fight, I need a fight. Because even again, I, I think I heard Floyd saying like, when you're an amateur, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter, win or lose. It's just all about, about experience. experience. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, that it's all sense. about experience. So when I heard that from him, I said to myself, you know what? I want to get as much experience as I, I can because I started doing this because I wanted to be a professional. Mm. I don't want to be fighting for medals. I don't want medals. I want to be fighting for. I'm a prize fighter. I want to be fighting for money. So I just done one season and I didn't like it. I I didn't think what, what, how much it was my style as well. What's the length of um, a season? I think the season starts in, if I'm not mistaken, in February, I mean, in September, and it finishes somewhere in June. And I started boxing in September. No, maybe end September. When was Floyd fight? I don't even know. Somewhere in September. So my first fight, I had it in November of 2017. November, yeah, November 2017. So from November 2017... <laughs> Until maybe my last fight I had in February because I turned pro, I turned pro in twenty eighteen. Wow! So wow. I literally so no even no even for like no even a year really no even a year. That's it. That's insane. No even a year. So, so you was you was boxing for like a couple of months, couple obviously of quite months. a lot. Yeah. Then you got into amateur boxing and done like four. No, no, no. I wasn't boxing at all. So I got into amateur boxing. Uh, my first fight I had it in November. My last fight I think I had it maybe in March or something. So a couple of months. Yeah, and you had like fourteen fights. Smash it all in there. That's that's like smash it all in that's there. Graft. I'm like yo, I need I need I need like, the experience. Do you know what? Regardless of the outcomes as well, like yeah. it, I wasn't interesting about winning or losing. All I wanted to go practice whatever I was doing in the gym. Yeah, that's that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to go in there. See if this is really what I want to do because sometimes you might think you want something and you get punched in the face. You're like, this is not for me. <laughs> so I just wanted That's to fair. see if, if this is really what I wanted. Do, so, do, do you remember your first fight? Oh, bro. Oh, my God. I was peeing every 10 minutes. I, I remember I was maybe... Um, you were what you were doing? I was peeing, going right, to the you, toilet every right, 10 yeah, minutes. Because yeah, of the adrenaline. Bro, I was so nervous. I was so nervous and oh the guy that was fighting was maybe six one or six two. I'm five I'm five ten, no five nine. The guy was tall. Oh. All I was doing, bro, I was just oh swinging like Mike Tyson. <laughs> I don't know what I'd done, but I won it. I was just swinging like I Mike Tyson. Win I win it. Nice. I won that fight, I won it. It was uh, like it was my club show. So it happened in our gym. Oh, okay. Like, like what? Um, is is that actually what actually in the gym? It was. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was okay. like I think like every I've year, every year, my club all stars. Yeah, they do like a, they call it like I don't know what they call. It, I forgot, but they do like a every year in November. They do like an event where everyone come to the actual boxing to uh, the boxing and then yeah yeah. So I think um, Islington boxing do that. They do that well. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so you had like fourteen fights. Oh my god, I smashed it, it all in. And it didn't scare you off then. No, no. I was like, you know what? Give me as much as you can. And when I feel like I had a little bit of knowledge of how to defend myself, I thought, let me go for it. Let me do what I wanted to do. Become a professional boxer. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So you and that's when you became pro. That's when I got my license. But I didn't fight until twenty twenty or twenty nineteen in December. Well, why is uh, why is that? I couldn't sell ticket, bro. Because in the UK they have this system of selling ticket. Because I haven't been boxing for a long time, nobody knew about me. Oh, all my friends, all my friend know me knows me as Michael, the guy that love yeah. that I like to love. And within the last like eighteen months, you're like a professional. They like they like yo. Since when do you box? Even my dad would thought I was a joke. We're like I'm like dad, I'm boxing. He's like yeah, shut up. I used to box when I was young. I play football. I did karate. <laughs> I did kung fu. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mom, mom, I'm not a boxer. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Nobody in my in, in my family to this day. I think maybe maybe it's just this year because I've been having fight regular. But my family, every time I tell I tell them that I fight, they think like I'm just I'm just joking. joking. I'm, I'm just like, yeah, of course, because it's they, still new, isn't it? It's still brand they, new. I don't think they even saw me. They, they ever saw me getting angry or upset. Mm. My family, I, they have never seen me like upset like never so when whenever they see me fight they're like how do you even do this <laughs> it's crazy man they don't believe it they, they don't believe I'm it i'm sure they're proud of you now though oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure i think i think i think they are how, so how did you end up in the west um because you was in so you was in um all oh, right so you from nottingham you moved to london didn't you and then you you was living near west london is that how you ended up um so basically um my mom was living in West London. My dad always lived in Enfield, Edmonton, oh, Tottenham. And then there was a time where I just went to see my mom because I was always with my dad. And then I thought, oh, let me go stay a bit with my, my mom. And that's when I started seeing this promotion fights for Floyd and Conor McGregor. Right, right. And next thing I know, I'm in a gym in West London. And that's how I started. So I stayed there in West London. What's the gym called? All stars. All stars. Yeah. Still there to hey, to this day. Yeah. Hey, still there. Yeah. Still I go there sometime. There. Yeah. Yeah. I teach the new generation. Give them a bit you of get knowledge. Involved, do you? Yeah, yeah. Do that sometime. Yeah. I enjoy doing it. It's, it's nice. And is her mum still in uh, West London? No, she's in she's in East London now. East. Yeah, she's in East London now. She, she moved. Um. So um, your so your first fight was in twenty uh, twenty. I think end of twenty. 19 i think 2019 end of 2019 or 2020 something like that yeah and what, what was that like for you i mean for me because that when i got my license it took me a long time to fight so i sort of forgot about that i thought to myself you know what maybe boxing is not for me i've got now i've got a license i can't fight because i can't sell ticket i just went back to work so i sort of took some time off training boxing every day like i was doing before I was just training every now and then, but I was more working, working because I needed the money. And I remember this it was a, it was a Tuesday. I see a call coming up on Tuesday after work. They called me to fight on Friday. I never, I, ha I haven't trained, and they tell me or oh, they pay me a couple of quid, but I have to lose the weight because I was weighing around seventy three. And they said the fight is for 64. 73 to 64. And then how many? I had to do it in, from, it was a Tuesday and the fight was on fr Friday. So I had like maybe two days. That's I told the guy, how am I going to do it? They're like, oh bro, fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what they told me. That's, that's what I did. That's what I did. And the guy that was fighting, was, was, is, a good, is a good fighter. He's an Irish champion. And at the time he had about 11 or he had about 12 fights, 11 win and one loss. So it was a good kid. So he was a favorite. Was, yeah, he, a, yeah, to win, yeah. So I went in there. I, I still gave him a good run. We, we done four run. I wasn't badly, badly hurt or anything like that. I still gave him the run, but... But you had to lose a significant... How did you, know, lose, how did you lose all that? Is it like literally just not... I just... I would, bro, I'll, I'll train maybe... I'll go for a run with like... I'll pull, I'll pull like a bin bag. Oh. I'll pull like a bin bag. I'll pull like a sauna suit. I'll pull jacket, everything. Seriously? I'll rub myself up. I thought you were about to say the monkey on your back. No, <laughs> back then I, I didn't have monkey. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go, I'll go for a run. I'll come back home. I'll barely drink water. I'm not gonna eat, and I'll do that maybe two, twice a day, and I'll go to work. And it just fell off of you, yeah. Bro, come fine night, I didn't have my legs. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you did. I didn't have my legs at all. I didn't have my legs. Like, I, I, 
Because not, I like to move. Oh, I try to move. I can't move. I'm like, why am I not moving? Why am I moving in slow motion? I'll see the punch coming. <laughs> it will hit me. Then I'll move. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. It was crazy. Oh, it was crazy. I lost my first. But I did, that, like, it was an opportunity to like. For me, it was an opportunity because I lost. I lost that that faith that I can ever fight because I couldn't get in the ring. I can't say a ticket. Did it, didn't the um. Wasn't there much opp opportunity through the boxing club that you was with or? Even my boxing club was against me turning professional. Were they? Because they were like, just yo, you just started boxing yesterday. You haven't even learned how to throw the fundamental year. You think you know, but you don't because you, you just started. I didn't know anything about boxing. I didn't even know they promoted, they managed it. Bro, I knew nothing. All I knew was fluid. And whatever he was saying to me, that's what I was doing. That's all I knew. That's amazing though. But I just knew in me that if I stay in this club, as much as I like it, I've learned everything that I could have learned in this club. Mm. Bro, I'm glad that I left when I left because I think maybe a few months I came back when I left that gym, I became a, pr a prostitute in a sense that I'll go to every gym. No, no, in that sense, but <laughs> I'll go to every gym just to sort of get the knowledge Experience, from different yeah. coaches. Like, I, I, I start aspiring everyone, bro. Everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a flyweight or a big weight. Whatever way you are, I'm going to aspire you. I just wanted to get the experience. Because I couldn't fight in the ring. So I thought, I'm going to get the experience in training. Yeah. I aspire everyone. I aspire world champion, Olympian, good boxers. That's how I spent my, my two years before I had my, my fight. I was just aspiring everyone. Sparring, sparring, sparring. I think my, my club was against me turning pro. I think for a while, I, I wasn't speaking with my coach, the one that took me. Because they were like, yo, what do you think? You think you know how to box now? Yeah, but, they, because uh, they've probably gone through that a long period of time. They have. Training. They have. They have. Know? And and to be honest with you, like, I, I'm not, I wouldn't like knock your way. You was obviously eager, but... Yeah. Can, you would have had to have gone from a lot of pain in a short period of time yeah. to, to get to where you wanted to get to. And that's like a tough journey to, to put yourself. It is, it is. I feel like as well, technically, I wouldn't improve as faster and quicker than I did if I had to stay in the gym. Because yeah. all they were teaching me was enough for me to just do what I could have done on that level. Mm. But my ambition was a bit higher, was a bit bigger. And nobody could have seen it. Even when I was speaking to them, I'm like, you guys see me here, I'm doing this, but I'm not actually here. Mm -hmm. I see myself fighting on the telly, fighting like Floyd. That was me. Like, Because I, I saw boxing through him. I want to do what he's doing. I see myself there. They're like, sometimes he was knocking me down. They're like, oh, you can't even, f even when you move, you move, you, you put your head like this, you're exposed, all of that. For me, I couldn't hear it. I was like, no, let me just take myself out of this situation because this this situation, this environment is not was it too, was designed it for me to... Neg negative, yeah. very negative. I'll come in the gym. I'll come in the gym there. It, like, everyone will be watching me now. Everything that I do, they'll point out. They'll be like, stop. Why are you punching like that? And you say you want to be a professional boxer. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was that bad. Yeah. I didn't mind that. But I thought to myself, it's good for you to... To see those mistakes, but can you teach me at least what what shall I do instead? But they wasn't doing it. They were just point out the mistakes and leave me there hanging. It's almost like they're pushing you. Pushing me down. down. Yeah. But I knew what I wanted. I knew that I wanted to become a professional boxer. Mm. Yeah, because uh, like like I say, they, they were so in that kind of thing of like training for five years, six, yeah. six seven, ten they, years. They're like, yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to pay your dues. You have to do, go through the amateur. You have to fight for the ABAs, fight for this, fight for that. I'm like, I didn't sign up for this. I signed up to become a professional boxer. They knew when I came in the gym the first day, they knew I spoke to, I spoke to the owner of the gym, head coach. All the coaches because I came early. Mm -hmm. Training started like at five. I was there at three. I spent time from three to five just speaking to them. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, yo, I, I, I want to become a professional boxer. What do I do? Mm. They're like, you need to learn how to box first. You need to be an amateur. I'm like, what's an amateur? Oh, it's when you fight for medals. I'm like, okay, I'll do it then. So they sort of love, not forced me, but they sort of like guided me into that. Because in my head, I didn't think you had to box amateur before you become professional. Yeah. But then it just became 
that environment became so negative for me to grow. I couldn't grow technically. I was doing the same mistakes and over and over again. So I had to take myself out and just go learn from different people, different people. And that's what you did. You started going around sparring people. That's it, sparring people. people, training with people. Was that just all over London or? No, not London, bro. All over the UK. All over the UK. I remember this, bro. Sometime I would spend six, I would spend two hours one journey, one hour training, two hours coming back. So it's about five hours every day. Just to train. Just to train. Mm. And plus, because I couldn't, I stopped working as well because I wanted to learn. So I really didn't have any money. So I would bump the train to go to training. So I would actually bump the train to go to training. And because I was doing it so much, the guy that worked there in my local, my train station at the time, knew me already. So whenever he sees me, he would just look away. It's cause I, at first it was like, pay for your fare, pay for your ticket. It was literally insulting me. But then... You became friends. I, not even friends. It's just, it's just whenever you see me, you look away. You just look away because he knows whatever he says, I'm going. I'm like, bro, I need to go training. <laughs> you can either open the door for me. We do it politely. Oh, but I'm not missing, I'm, I'm not missing my training. Yeah, I was bumping the train to go to training. I didn't have any money on me. And I stopped working because... I couldn't balance it. Yeah. I couldn't balance it both. I couldn't work, work and come train, train. I couldn't do it. So I had to decide, like, you know what? I'd rather be broke now. For later on. For later, yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, you that's to be honest, that's incredible. That's incredible. Like you you, you it's, I, I think if you if you do want to get really good at something as well, like you've got to put your whole heart into it. You have to, bro. You and, have and to. Distractions. Don't get me wrong. You need to make money for, for practical of living, but mm. distractions uh, can can like divert your. They just divert your attention. Yeah. You're trying and, to do too much, and you can also find this, not excuses, but because there are excuses if you look at them. At the same time, they are facts because we're living in a society where you have to pay for your bills pay for your house pay for your food mm. that alone you can use that as a as an excuse factor that oh i don't have the money um okay let me go work and people have different ways of doing things but the way i saw it in my um in my case i said to myself i need to get better and i started boxing late i don't have the money to pay for all these coaches how can I go and get gain the knowledge that I need to and get the experience? Yeah. Okay. The, the, without sounding disrespectful either, like I'm not being funny, but where you came from, yeah, you didn't have much anyway. Yes, so hundred so. percent. For me, I was like, what have I got to lose? Yeah. Plus, I said to myself, yeah, worst case scenario, I'm I was like maybe twenty at the time. I'm like, let's say I'll give this until I'm thirty. If nothing happened, then I can always learn whatever, like a career path, and I can still build my life then because I'm still if I'm 30 I'm still young mm. so I said to myself no problem these 10 years nothing else matter but boxing I'm gonna give it 10 years like if 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 things are still the way they are right now then I'll know that okay this is this thing was not meant for me but at least I'm gonna try. give it 10 years I'm gonna try whatever it takes whatever it takes uh, what is, uh you, yeah, yeah, because you haven't been training for 10 years now, have you? No, no, uh, no. It's been now, what, 26 this year. So... So a good six years. So it's going to be six years going, yeah. And um, how many how many pro fights have you had now? I've had five now. Five now. Yeah, I lost my my first two and I won the last three. So I'm now fighting soon as well. I've got, I've got um, the finals coming for this tournament that I entered. Yeah, so so tell, tell how did you how did you get invited or involved in this? Uh... That's why that's why back to what we said at the beginning. There's things that we do. Sometimes we don't know why we're doing it, but there's a reason. See the way I was going, inspiring everyone. Somehow I sort of made impression to some coach that I spoke maybe years ago, and then apparently is one of is one of the uh, the co-founders for this tournament. So they was thinking of ideas fighters cities for this concept of this tournament and he thought of me he's like oh i know this guy he used to come here his past passport it could be a good candidate wow, wow. and that's how 
It was I, like network. So you were just networking, really. Yeah, it's just time. I go spar. Because when you're sparring them, they see okay, oh, you you're decent, you're alright. What? Why haven't you been fighting? They ask you those questions, and then I say to them, oh, I'm like, yeah. I can't fight because I can't sell ticket because they know the business, the way it works. They're like, oh, yeah, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. But when this opportunity came that you don't have to sell ticket, but you get to fight in good, good fight, it, it could be televised and opportunities. Yeah, it gave me a call. And the minute it gave me a call, I'm like, yo, I wonder, sign me up. You're definitely not passing this. I'm not passing this. I'm taking it with both hands. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I fought the semi-finals. I won. So, so how many fights in that tournament? It was, it was, it was, it was two fights basically. So you fight. It starts from the t semi-finals, then the finals. Oh, is that it? So, oh, okay. So it's only the two. It's only two fights. Right, yeah. Fair. So and, and 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 what would that lead on to? Then? It would lead up to bigger things like the winner of um of the finals can potentially challenge for the British uh, British title. Wow. So let's say. I fight in, 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 in the finals and knock out my guy, get him out of the way. Next year, I'm looking at fighting for the uh, British title. Is that your plan to... Uh... Bro, whatever it takes to bring me to my goal, I'm taking it. Yeah, you're doing what you need to do. I just want to be able to be on the main card and fight like Floyd because I saw that. And for me, until I do that, I ain't done nothing yet. Mm. So I'm very focused with what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm just training, training improving constantly in the gym and do you know what like for, uh, from my point of view i think anything's possible 100 like, percent. I, th I think if you if you've got that serious mindset yeah like you there's no point even judging it now you've got to judge it when you're 10 years into something 100 yeah like, that's when you've but if you you need to have that unlimited belief of a mindset because no one's going to believe in it as much as you can it is, it is man because the way you see it like you're the one that got that thoughts you're the one that got that vision or that idea nobody else got it mm. so if nobody else around you believe believes what you're believing it just makes sense because they can't they're not standing where you're standing they're not on your shoes they, they don't see your vision they're not in here mm. when i go back to sleep at night they're not in my thoughts mm. i'm there with myself i speak to myself so i know what i tell myself and if i truly believe to what i'm saying it's only a matter of time. Yeah, 100%. It's only a matter yeah. of time. Yeah. I'm That's why every day I, I just work on things that can guide me in the journey to where I want to be. Things like patient, you know, I get to work on that. I get to work on on just knowing when when to speak, when to do it. There's a lot of things that You're going through I'm going through towards my journey mm -hmm. to where I want to go. And for me, it's all about embracing the journey. Like every day, I, I make this part of my life. Like there's no way I'm spending a day without training. The, the, the no thing way. I love though is like you, so you've got the end goal here. Yeah. But you're still going, like you're still understanding that journey, that process yeah, that you're going through. So it's like, it's nice because you've got to trust the process. Yeah, though. as much as the end goal is good for me, as much as I want to be a billionaire by the time I retire, I want to make a lot of money, crazy money. <laughs> yeah. But for me, what's important, the steps that I'm taking, mm. okay, what can I do today that will lead me to the next step? Mm. What can I do to, tomorrow that will lead me to the next step? For me, I'm more obsessed with those steps than the end goal. Because I know once I get it, naturally as a human, I will want more. Yeah. Like, let's say today I make a billion. I'm like, wow, I made one billion? Uh, what about so, you? Yeah. <laughs> I know for a fact, I will want that. Mm. But for me, it's about... Becoming better as a person, becoming better as a as, as a fighter. Well, they, but they, there's that saying about it's not the journey, it's the destination. It's not the destination. It's the journey. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah it's not so, like so, that. So, so it's like you got to enjoy the process. Yeah, you fall in love. Yeah, with, yeah. with the game of it, rather than thinking. For oh, me to be honest, I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I love the game, but I'm not in love with the game. Although, like boxing, for me, boxing has helped me be more focused and more disciplined. But I'm not really like in love with it. Yeah, you don't like watch. Um, no, no, no. I, 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 I don't yeah. watch boxing at all. At all. <laughs> at all. Like the only person that I watch is Floyd. Mm. I watch him talk, do whatever he gotta do. Wow. It's like it's like one of it's like my main person that to this day is inspiration. Inspiration to, you. to yeah. me. So if anything, I watch him. 
not even boxing. I mean, he sold boxing to me. I didn't come to boxing because I loved boxing, no, because I saw him and I was like, no, I want to be like this guy. Mm. I, I want to do the things that he's doing. Yeah. Not like I mean to be honest, what he's done is incredible. It's crazy, incredible, boy. Change, yeah. change the sport of boxing. Mm. Change the sport of boxing. So for me, it's just about coming every day, showing up, showing up. That's that's important. Showing up every day, regardless of how I'm feeling. Most of the time, when I go to the gym, I'm knackered. I'm tired. I don't want to be there. But I'm thinking to myself, if I don't come today, my opponent, the guy that's trying to rob this this um, dream of me. He's training. Mm. So I'm giving him chances. There's no way I'm going to give him any chance. I'm going to take every chance that I get away from him. To, to that, so that, that, so that, so that when we fight, yeah. I've got that edge over him. Sometimes for no reason, I just like sleep like at 7, 7 p.m. So that I can wake up at midnight to go for a run. Because I know there's no way my opponent is running at midnight. I know midnight is what, probably watching Netflix and, and chill is at midnight. A, what, what's the benefit of running at that time? <laughs> I think it's it's more mental the way I see it for me at least oh, it's all mental it's all mental because I know there's no way he's doing this mm. is there's no way my opponent is training like midnight or two a.m. in the morning there's no way because if I do that I know he's gonna wake up maybe at seven maybe his first session gonna be around nine ten when he's gonna be training I will be training. Yeah, you've already been training. I've been like, training already. So I've sleeping. I've got that edge over him. So for me it's more mental. Yeah. It's all it's more mental. Plus I just I'm 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 such an early riser. I just like to wake up in the morning, get things done early. You're young, you've got loads of energy still. Bro, so I got plenty of energy. Take advantage of it. Plenty of energy. That's why for me right now, yeah. What, anything that I'm doing, I'm not too worried about it. Because I know in case it don't go my way, I've got I've got time. Mm. I've got time. I can do whatever. Uh, and and at least you can honestly say that you tried as I well. I gave her a go. You I gave her like a, a proper, shot, like, a proper shot. Yeah. Yeah. No. Do you know what? That's a that's a, it's incredible. And I do um like I wholeheartedly like wish you all the best in in Thank what you, you're doing. Thank you. Thank I'm you. excited to, to see uh see where you're going. And um, you know, it was quite interesting because when you were talking about you going all these different places sparring, you actually met quite a lot of influencers a lot oh, along yeah. the, the journey. Met a lot of people. Like you, like you've met KSI. You've you've got a good friend, uh, Arms Corleone. Yeah, yeah. Like, how, how did you like go about meeting these people? I mean, I met them through the the gym again. Like there was there was um I think I met them when uh, COVID happened. Oh, was all the gym, sort of yeah, all the gym were closed. And there was this one particular gym. <laughs> it was always open. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think like ever since I've been in that gym, like, because like, I don't know if you've heard of this, like iron sharp and iron. They're saying that iron sharp and iron. No. Oh, iron sharp and iron. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, 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 100%. yeah, 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 I have heard. I feel like in that gym, there's so, there's so much ambition. Mm. Like every single fighter in there is hungry want to succeed want to make it as a fighter and because i want the same thing that they want and i got myself in a place with similar like-minded people bro we are unstop unstoppable yeah like when, when we train if you're not a fighter you come and see us you feel like these people are crazy what are they doing <laughs> like we we physically damage our body we do we we, we abuse ourselves every time we're training you you all look happy though. Like I see like no arms. Idea, bro. Like I see arms. Yeah. And like the way he exactly what you were saying. Yeah. Like, we're like punching each other in the stomach and beating each other up. Um but you all look like, like you're loving it. Hundred percent boy. The thing is like our body don't wonder, but our mind is forcing our body to do that. So it's conditioning as well, it is, isn't it? It like, is. Rather be conditioned by good people around you than than the, the guy in the Or rather or rather you that I know in the gym, beat me up, and then correct it, so that when I go in a fight, I cannot make the same mistake, but not making those mistakes in the gym, and be there, and find it out. Because, um, I, I, I've been uh, sparring, but I'm going to be fighting in, um, let's go bro, <laughs> no, let's go, yeah, I'll yeah, be yeah. there, supporting I'm, you man, uh, I'm doing my first fight, at the Selby Centre, Yeah, I, I've been, um, sparring, and I've been, I got punched, like straight in the face, here. <laughs> I did not feel. My eyes were watering. Like I got, got I had a bruise on my nose. Oh my like, god! Yeah, and I was just like, I was like, 
I was pissed, I was annoyed, yeah. but I was just like, this is really necessary. Like it's necessary for the, the journey um, because I don't want any hidden surprises on the no. line. Like I want to know that everything I've done outside of that ring has been towards yeah, yeah. getting in, in the ring. So. Everything that you, you, you can face on the night, you have gone through it in the gym. Yeah. That way you you are least prepared. I'm gonna have to start getting up at midnight and two in the morning. Bro, bro whatever you gotta running. do, man. <laughs> whatever you gotta do. Now I've got the inspiration. <laughs> whatever you gotta do. Sometimes you gotta set yourself challenges because like as a human being, we one thing that I've noticed throughout my I know I haven't lived in a long time in this world, but throughout my twenty six years is we lack progress. Mm. I don't want to be doing the same thing every day. Imagine if we're telling you every day, you can all you got to eat every day for breakfast is, is what oats, yeah. and for dinner, beans. You're gonna get fed up of it. You'll be like, no, I want to change. Yeah. So we lack progress as human beings. So you can say you can set yourself some challenges. You can do, you can wake up like me. I, sometimes I do it for fun, just so that I can tell my body that I'm in charge. Like my mind is in charge. I'm the boss. I like, I'll be like, you know what? I know I'm tired. Like sometimes I do like I train every day, Monday to Sunday. I Sunday do as well. Sunday as well. I do twice every day and once on a Sunday. And sometimes during the week, like on the weekdays, I'm tired. I'm like, wow, I'm tired. Why am I tired? I had an extra session. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, because I'm I'm this tired, I wanna give myself an extra session just for mobility. But somehow, whenever I do that, by the end of the week, I feel so good. I feel so good. Yeah, Yeah, I feel like, you know what? I don't feel that bad. Mm. So sometimes it's not to just play those mind games with yourself and set yourself new target. You can do this today, this the next day. At least you know, okay, you're you're having fun with it. Because it's it's quite boring, bro. It's repetitive. You're doing the same thing every day. Boring, and uh, I think it really helps when you're around the right sort of, sort of people as well. You need that, yeah. Like when you're when you're around these like ambitious people, and yeah. all like even the I love that's what I love about the Fit Factory. Like it's good energy there. It's like it's not like it's like a negative place to mm, not quite to, to train in. So yeah. like everyone's kind of like it's spruce, like um like pushing each other on and 100% like, yeah yeah cheering for each other yeah. is what I'm looking for. It's a good community place. Like like we all come with different goals but we all we, we all have goals although it may be different to each of each of us mm. but the objective is that we've got a goal and we're pushing each other to achieving those goals exactly. and when we all meet together we're like oh yeah you like i made the other guy um at the faith factory i think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday i was speaking to him and he was telling me that oh, he was going through a law um couple of years back and because he was going through a lot mentally, he just let himself go and start eating, drinking. It got really, really big. And maybe the beginning of this year, he decided to just get back into training. And now he has lost maybe, what, 30, 30 pounds or 30 stone. Yeah. I'm like, bro, that's the story I want to hear. Mm-hmm. So we just keep it up, keep on training. Just I gave him an advice. I'm like, bro, do you know what? What you're doing is perfect. Just keep it up every day. Do a little bit every day. Yeah. Just do a little bit every day. Even if it's 10 minutes walk, do it. Every day, every day. Consistency is key. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. I, th- I think it's like for some people, they've come from a different environment. Yeah. So they're trying to grow beyond that environment that they've come from. And sometimes it's easier to probably fall, default and go back into the the same place. But I think once you push beyond that line, yeah. There's like some beauty after that, it is, you know? man. And then, and then, like, then you got to push beyond that line as well. Like, it is, it is. You just got, you have got to just keep going all yeah. the time. But you know, otherwise, you lose purpose, you lose you fulfillment. Do. You do, you do, man. Like as, as human, we 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 we've been cre- we was created with this uh, like beautiful thing. Like we can we can push ourselves to the max. There's no limit. Mm. The only limitation you've got is what you say yourself. 100%. So you you the only one that can create that wall right in front of you. Be like, oh yeah, maybe I can just push myself until here. But you can actually go further than that. And you only find that if you do let yourself go. 
Mm. It's like they say, you got to die to be born again. Like you just yeah. have to like be like, you know what? Close your eyes, blindly have faith and just go. What's the worst that can happen? Mm. Yeah, do you know what? That's a good, that is a, you've got a good uh, mindset on you, man. That's I try, that's man. Nice. It's nice to see. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you know what? It's, um, it's been quite inspirational for me, if I'm honest. Has it? You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has, it has. Because like, I think when I was younger, I was very, um, I was very similar to you. I think as I've got older, I've you know, probably got a little bit more tired. I've yeah. Started to complain a little bit more, but you know, I'm... It's okay to complain, bro. Yeah, it is, it's it is. Not bad. It is, but I think, you know, it's also important to hold yourself accountable. Yeah, and, big time. And make sure you understand that if you want something good in life, you've got to work hard at you it. you got to make it happen. Nothing yeah. comes to you easily. Nothing. You know? But it is worth it. Yeah. Like, I, I generally believe, like, any if if you generally want something in life, like, and you, and you work really hard to get it, I think it's totally worth it. Yeah. That feeling that you get from it, that proud feeling, that, yeah. that energy is like, I've done this. Like, Just knowing that you made it happen. Yeah. You made it happen. 100%. You grafted for it. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm the same as well, man. Like, uh, I like grafting for things. I like to just use my hand, use my my being to make things happen. Mm. You know? Yeah, and it's, it's good as well. They keep telling me, like, that you're a good boxer. So, you know, you've obviously got some You don't think I am? <laughs> I, do you know what? I haven't really seen you fully, but I'm looking oh forward to... Oh, my God. Um, Calm, you I'm see, looking man. forward to Essex. And, I'm... I'm um, I'm I'm but, quite an entertainer. I like to entertain. Yeah, yeah. I like I'm to entertain. I'm definitely man. looking forward to it. Yeah, and I'll be rooting for you for sure. Me come and we'll be coming up there. That, we'll have to get the whole fit factory to come. And oh. Nemo as well. Nemo, if, even Nemo. Oh, I was about to ask you as well. I like the name, the motive. The motive. What, what's the story behind it? The, the motive. It's it's kind of like um, it's people's it's people's connected to people's purpose. Like what their motive is in life. What their See what what it is that they're doing in life and what they've done i think that, that so the the purpose of the podcast was to talk about people's life journeys where they've had adversities and challenges but and do you know what you're a very good example of a guest for this podcast yeah yeah because Pleasure, you've, bro. from your journey of where you came from like and I didn't even know it was that deep either, by the way, like your story. I just knew you was a good boxer. You got good energy. Yeah. Like, and I thought, oh, he'd be a cool person to talk to. But what you said, I was a bit like, whoa, is that, is that what happened? But um, yeah, and, and the fact that you've kind of come out of that and then turned your life around and now you're, and you're still like pushing towards something positive, like yeah. it's, it's really good to see. And I think that's what we should all be doing as humans, you know, like, because I think I've seen what it's like in the dark place as mm. well. So but I've also seen what it looks like on the the light the light side of it all. Yeah, I think the point you have to do is just keep going forward, keep pushing That's forward, it, man. keep growing. The only time you stop is when you can't breathe. Yeah, yeah, hundred. The minute you 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 you, you the minute you get up, the minute you can, you're able to get up in the morning. It it it's hunting season. You have to be able to just do whatever. Because some people they're not really into material stuff. It could be just like maybe just family being nice as a person because for me the way i see it is as human we've been put into this world to just you know be nice to each other talk to each other trying to help each other mm -hmm. like it doesn't have to be like yeah. financial yeah. help no mm -hmm. just find out how people are doing i remember like before um like when i was working like a mind person as i say i had so many jobs one of the jobs that i had was uh was to be being a salesman yeah and I remember I had this goal that I'd said to myself because I was very terrible at selling. I couldn't sell at all, <laughs> but it was my job. So I said to myself, to get better, what can I do? Every day, for no reason, I would speak to at least five people, just ask them, hello, how was your day? Or just good morning, just that. And sometimes you, you, you say that to people, people would be like, why is he talking to me? Yeah, They'd be like, right. wow, oh, thank you. Yeah, my day was good. Like People like that. But as human, we've been putting to make a difference. But sometimes we get caught up with with life, mm -hmm. you know, with business. You got to rush to go for work or go pick up your kids or go do this. We forget there's about lot, I, the I little feel, thing. I feel like there's a lot of that in London, to be honest. Like, I feel like there's a lot of like pressure. People, yeah, there's a lot. People always kind of locked in. Crazy so, pressure. Yeah. Even when, when I was in Nottingham, was it like that? Was it? Oh, it was it was calm. Even like I think oh. last year I I was staying in Manchester, yeah, for a bit. Uh, I was staying in this little town. 
I, I wouldn't say I'm the only, I was the only black person, but it felt like it. I was the only black person. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I go to a supermarket like Tesco, you know, I'll be people coming around me, looking at me. So I, I liked it. I liked it. But I was just going to say hello to them. When I say hello to them, they will speak to me straight away. They'd be like, oh, yeah, good, good. I haven't seen you here. We just start a conversation like that. But in here, we don't, in London, especially in London, like if you see someone right now, there's still a chance you will see them again. Mm. Yeah, it's that busy. Yeah. <laughs> it's that busy. Mm. So like back then, I would just like speak to five people a day, say, ask them how they are, find out how they're doing, say that's, hello to them, and really just walk walked away. That's it. That's and I feel like that, that helped me a lot as well. Yeah, it helped me a lot. You made a few people's day that way as well. You oh, know? 100%. Like, 100%, some, 100% some yeah. Some people just want to be seen, you know? Yeah. Like, even sometimes by me speaking to them made my day because I wasn't expecting them to speak to me back. Yeah, some yeah. Some people they, was probably expecting the worst most of Some them. people, they would be so rude. They'd be like, fuck off. Why are you saying, why are you looking at me? Why are you talking to me? Like, yeah. be rudely rude to you. Yeah, but aggressive for no Aggressive reason, for no reason. Like, yeah. But I, it was fine for me because I needed that. I needed that. I needed to just get get out of my comfort zone mm. because I, I wanted to become a better person. And I'm sure I didn't say this uh, at the beginning, but... Back home in Congo, like I was very socially, I was very awkward. Were you? Like, bro, I couldn't speak. Like, we can ha- imagine if we were having a conversation, right? I'll be looking down for no reason. I was, I struggle with st- stuttering. Okay. And uh, when you're a kid, it's just kids are mean. In Congo, yeah, when someone is stuttering, you know charcoal. Yeah, yeah. If they show you charcoal, but you're not gonna bring. You're not gonna say a word. You you will go even worse. Like, uh, 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 uh. or some people just like cross their fingers like this. You. What, what would they do with charcoal? Just show it to you. What? Just show it to you. And then you won't say a word. Oh right. What? Uh, oh, so they wouldn't <laughs> do anything with it. Or no, like, they just they take would... the charcoal just to sort of like angers you. Scary. They'll show you, and you won't say a word. You will be you will be struggling to bring to say a word out of you. So that was me growing up. So I. I I dealt a lot with like social anxiety and stuff like that. And for me, having that as a challenge boost me up, massive. helped me a lot. Yeah, Because I could find myself, okay, I can actually talk to people. People, they know, they know that bad. They're not going to bite me. They're not going to kill me. Because before I feel like they would show me a charcoal and I start starting like, <laughs> yeah. it was terrible, man. Do you, do you know what? I think a lot of people have su- suffer with or s- still even to this day, they yeah. suffer with social anxiety. Yeah, it is, it's um, not easy, man. But to do what you've just said of like going out there and just talking to random people. Yeah, it takes balls, man. Uh, yeah, it's it does. Just, uh, it, takes, it takes big balls. And yeah. to be fair, I, I don't really know what you've got to lose. You haven't really got anything to nothing lose. Nothing to lose. You? Nothing like, to you lose. Might, somebody might hurt your feelings. By just, yeah, yeah not, but, not replaying back at you. That's the worst they might do. That, that's about as bad yeah. as it gets. But the, what you get from it, the growth you get it's from good. it. It's good. It's a lot, man. It's yeah. big time, yeah. That's incredible it's for somebody that, um, that, that weren't even um, talking before. It's to crazy, be boy. It's crazy, yeah. It's crazy. It's just about like wanting the best for yourself. Like even... For me, the minutes I got into this country, like my mindset opened up a little bit because I was able to look at things from different perspective. Because mm-hmm. when you, when you, in, that's, I'm speaking from experience, like when I was in Congo, because I was used to seeing one way of life, one way of things, this is how things are get, this is how we do things here. I had one way of, you know, of life. That's how I thought life should be. But the minutes I got here, I saw diversity in people, in colours. Like, I never saw a white person until I got to the UK. And believe it or not, it might sound crazy, but I used to poke people like this when I was going to college just to see if they... Sk- <laughs> I was doing that, I swear to God. Really? I was poking... When I went to college in Nottingham, like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I like the hair, touching, touching people. It was a bit weird, but it was good for me to see different kind of, mm. you know, lifestyle cultures, and I wanted to become better. I wanted to just improve myself. I want, I didn't want to be in a room and just being there, you know, locked yeah. up with, with my shell. I didn't want that person anymore. Because because it was easy to stay that way. As yeah, well, it right? was. You're, you're, it was so easy, yeah. bro. Like you're never gonna hear me even cough if you're in the room. Mm. I'm not gonna cough. If you're not gonna hear just my voice. Ghost, just like, be a ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but there's like. But it goes back to that, like not having then a purpose or fulfillment in your life. You, yeah. you, you, you feel like an empty soul, didn't you? Like you're just going through life. 
Yeah, just, just, you just, you just, yeah, you just, you're, you're almost dead before you've de- lived, yeah. it, it, aren't you? So you're not even living, you're just alive. Mm. You're just alive. Yeah. yeah, but do you know, do you know what, man? It's, a, it's an incredible, uh, incredible journey that you've been on, and you know, I don't say that lightly based on everything that you've said this, uh, said today. So, um, still yeah, still on the journey, bro. Still, still on, on the journey. Yeah, still on the journey. Keep it going. Yeah. But do you know what? I'm I'm excited for your future. I'm excited for your future. Me really, too, bro. Yeah. I'm excited to see what. I, can, I think I heard some someone saying this like it's a shame for a young man to grow old and not understand what his body is capable of. Like every time I listen to that quote, I'm like, it's wow. I'm like, wow. I'm intrigued. Mm-hmm. What can my body actually, you know? What can I re- bring to life? Like, how can I? Re- how far can I really? How go far with can this? I push myself? Mm. So that alone gets me excited because I'm really into personal growth. That alone gets me excited. I'm like, okay, I'm looking forward to this. Mm. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, no, that's that's brilliant, man. And uh, do you know what, um, Michael? All I can say is thank you for for coming here. Thank today. you for having me, bro. Yeah, I really appreciate, appreciate it. Man. Enjoyed thank the you. conversation. Me too, man. Yeah, and uh, and I'll see you again soon. The motive still on. <laughs> Thank you, bro.